talking about climate? Why am I talking about melting icebergs? And so on and so forth. But before I go any further, I have a poll for you to answer. I want to understand if you save or invest money and do you do it for the present or for the future or you don't save at all. So if you could go to slido.com and enter the code uh, that's displayed on the screen, uh, then we can see the results. Can we do that really quickly, please? Okay, it seems like everyone is investing or saving money for future, which is excellent. Uh, oh, there are some people who do not save or invest. That's also interesting. Well, <laughs> that, that is really nice to see that the numbers are changing. So uh, why am I asking this question? Okay, and then, of course, now we can see the distribution changes. Some of you are saving for the present. Now, why am I asking this question? Let's move on. But before I answer that question, uh, I want to give a disclaimer that uh, this is not a climate change debate and I'm not a climate change expert. This talk is only intended to tickle your brain and make you think. Okay, I want you to think at the end of this talk as to what your contribution is. And we will come back to the answer of that question or the reason of that question in some time. But before that, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Brijesh Deb. Uh, I'm a principal consultant with Infosys, so a chief enablement officer with the Test Chat community. Uh, this is a picture from last year. And after that, there have been certain UI changes that you could see and that Somya and I were talking about. Uh, these are my credentials on LinkedIn, Medium, and on ADP list, where I'm a mentor. Um, I have had a great association with Agile Testing Alliance over many years now. Uh, I have been a part of Agile Testing Alliance since 2013. I did my first ever conference with them in the year 2016, and uh, it's been a long association. However, one edition of the ATA GTR that I missed was the 2018 edition. And the reason for that was that my son was born that year. And that changed my perspectives towards looking at things. While I was saving and investing money and enjoying life for myself, I suddenly had to start thinking about the future, about saving and investing for my son about because I was staring right at the next generation. And that made me think, oh, whatever I do now, all the fun that I have now, will it be sufficient when my son grows up? I need to have a saving instrument. I need to have some investments for the future of my son. And that said, that discussion, that thought from four years ago brings me to today's talk. And it's about sustainability. Are we doing enough for our future generations in terms of this planet? Are we saving enough? Are we investing in the right instruments? Are we making sure that we have given or we are giving them a platform where they can grow and do well in their lives as much as we have been doing for ourselves, right? So on that note, let's start talking about sustainability. Let's do it in the way that I like the most. That is by using 5W1H. So the first W is what? What is sustainability? If you look it up on Google, the simple definition says, are you able to maintain a steady rate or steady state of anything that you are doing throughout years, throughout generations? Which means that if you are 
able to enjoy something today will you be able to constantly enjoy it at the same rate at the same pace at the same level maybe 5 years down the line maybe 10 years down the line or 100 years down the line are things sustainable so sustainability is more of maintaining a similar level or rate for the next generations why is this important this is important because you know today we are seeing all these changes that are happening to our planet you know all the chaos that's happening around us i gave you a few examples from our environment that is happening there are uh, you know social and economic impacts of of the same a uh, short while ago we had a panel discussion where we heard the ladies talk about diversity and inclusion diversity and inclusion is a big part of sustainability you know we had a discussion where you know we spoke about gender debate which is also a big part of sustainability it is important for us to understand that all of this comes together when we are talking about saving or protecting our planet for the next generation where is the sustainability discussion applicable it is applicable to our entire planet it is applicable to the place where we live in today because that is something that we are going to keep for our future generations to come who is responsible for sustainability now it's very easy to think about you know industries which are causing a lot of air pollution for example cement factories or thermal power plants or the airline industries motor vehicles you know uh, or industries that are causing water pollution and things like that and we can say hey they are the ones who are responsible maybe you know the airlines should take care of it maybe the oil and natural gas industry should take care of it but the answer is no all of us are equally responsible we work in the software industry and we are equally responsible for the sustainability initiatives around the world when do we want to do it we want to do it now if we don't do it now maybe tomorrow will be too late for us how do we do it that is something that we are going to look at in the forthcoming slides now before i go any further the united nations has given us certain guidelines about sustainability and you know they have spoken about certain sustainability development goals there are 17 of them let's look at let's look at them uh, briefly first one is no poverty they want to eliminate poverty from this planet that is a common goal for all of us no hunger nobody should be sleeping hungry that is one of the goals that they have good health and well being everyone on the planet should have access to good health and should be able to live well there is quality education that is a goal that we have where everyone should have access to quality education then there is gender equality the discussion that we had this morning you know you treat all genders equally irrespective of of the socio economic situation that they are in then everyone should have access to clean water and sanitation everyone should have access to affordable and clean energy now uh, we are seeing a war going on right now because of which the energy prices have skyrocketed especially if you are looking at europe you know the energy prices have gone up drastically which has left a lot of people uh, you know in a situation where they do not have access to affordable energy the energy sources are depleting so that's why there is a lot of push on the renewable sources of energy such as wind and solar now that's a constant initiative that has been going on now decent work and economic growth everyone should have access to some means of income some source of income and it has to be in such a way that you know everyone is able to have a self sustaining life they should be able to live for themselves and for their future generations industries innovation and infrastructure the focus of industries innovation and infrastructure should be towards saving the planet towards giving us better lives then reduce inequalities now there is inequalities between races between genders between
countries that has to reduce that has to uh, be made sure that you know we are treating everyone equally sustainable cities and communities when we talk about cities and communities they should be livable they should be in a way be able to you know give what people need responsible co consumption and production now uh, when uh, you know we are producing a lot of food and a lot of things get wasted every day are we focusing purely on production are we not focusing on consumption are we looking at the wastage are we trying to eliminate it that is something that we need to think globally you know there are a lot of statistics that i can actually throw on the amount of food that is wasted every day but are we looking at that and thinking you know that the food that we are wasting could have been useful for somebody else on some other part of the planet that is a question that we need to ask collectively then there is climate action you know in the opening slide i had pictures of what is happening to the climate around us you know we need to think about it collectively and find out solutions then what are we doing to the marine aquatic life are we making the condition livable for them or are we depleting their natural habitat then life on land what happens to people what happens to animals what happens to the plants that are there on this planet we need to keep thinking about it then you know as we are talking about all these we need to make sure that everybody lives lives a peaceful life and has justice available and most importantly all of us need to work on this collectively through partnerships so that all these goals are achieved now from where did i get this this is a directive by the united nations and it is available on their website you can look it up and read more uh, and i will be giving the references i will be sharing these slides right after my talk you can see the references and learn more about these now having said all this you know we it's very easy for us to say oh you know we are not responsible we work in the software industry it is not our job to start looking at you know uh, these initiatives or take care of the planet it is somebody else who needs to take care but let me tell you something we are right in the middle of this we are the ones who can actually contribute let's look at certain aspects of software development how it is tied to sustainability number 1 you know the uh, is is towards the carbon footprint that we are leaving are we talking about applications that reduce the carbon footprint that we leave behind are we talking about applications that are being developed which are you know efficient in terms of carbon usage then are we talking about applications that are uh, consuming less electricity because that also impacts the planet a lot are we talking about hardware that shows us that leaves behind uh, you know th those are uh, you know showing lesser carbon intensity are we thinking about it from that perspective are we talking about hardware that is carbon efficient that is you know once the usage is done it doesn't do any more damage to the environment are we talking about an optimal use of energy when it comes to our equipments when it comes to our software are we talking about uh you know uh, situations where the data the information is available to all of us in a seamless way within a certain network are we talking about applications that deal with the demand that comes in in terms of hardware and software usage and most importantly are we doing enough towards measurement and most importantly optimizing the use of you know carbon efficient and energy efficient applications now these are some of the goals of green software development now this is a big initiative being led by none other than microsoft and they have you know seen uh, the results changing as far as their own applications go and now this is being taken up by other companies as well and everybody is working towards contributing their bit for the uh you know uh, 
for the sustainability narrative that we have around us. Now, green software engineering, while it spoke about the eight principles that I just discussed before you, has got two straightforward policies or philosophies. Everyone has a part to play in the climate solution, which is what I said, that you cannot escape. You cannot say, oh, you know what? I'm a software tester. I cannot think about it. I don't have to think about it. All I need to think about it is my automation solution or my performance test or my CI CD pipeline. And then I'm done for the day. No, that is not done at all. You have to constantly keep thinking that, you know, whatever you are doing as a part of your role as a tester, are you contributing towards this or not? If you are not thinking about it right now, start thinking. Now, very recently, there was a post on LinkedIn which spoke about somebody having 5,000 uh, automated tests running. The, the immediate question that I asked was, is that adding efficiency? Is that adding some value? There was a discussion that popped up in the test chat community channel as well, where you know, one of my close friends mentioned that they are running about 3,800 automation test cases and they are running seamlessly. And my question immediately was, that are they adding value? Are they making a difference? If not, what are you doing about making your test cases or your, your test more efficient? How are you adding efficiency to your test? Are you retiring the old test that you are doing or you are still continuing to add to your list of tests that you're building seamlessly without caring about anything. While it may look very nice to have more and more tests, believe me, you are not doing justice to your planet. Think about it for a moment from that perspective. How much time you're spending, how much energy is being consumed in running your tests. Start thinking about it. So every one of us is equally responsible for the solution towards sustainability. And most importantly, you know, the second philosophy says that sustainability is enough all by itself to justify our work. If you are thinking about the solutions from a sustainability perspective, it is more than enough. You don't need any other justification. Why do you need, you know, an optimized number of test cases is because you are working towards sustainability. It's very simple. Why do you need to make your applications such that, you know, you do a lot with less number of lines of code? It's because you are working towards sustainability. It's very simple to say that, and that's more than enough. You don't need any other justification. So what does it all mean? It means that you are meeting the needs of the users without compromising anything for the future generations. It means that you are ensuring an economic and social environment which are considered while designing the applications. It means that you are promoting sustainable consumption and production in the patterns in software industry. It means that you are protecting the natural environment. And it also means that you're promoting social inclusion and equality through design and deployment of software. This is what it means. This is what all the principles and the philosophy translate into. Now, what are some of the practices that will help us achieve our goals from a sustainability perspective? There is a mindset that prevails within organizations that let's build all the features. Let's put, it, put together all the features. We can think about testing later. We can think about bug fixes later. We have to get out of that mindset. How can we do that? Is by making sure that we are more proactive in terms of you know, understanding where we can find defects, where we can see problems. You know, practices such as test-driven development or behavior-driven development help us start thinking about all this. You know, we start thinking about defects early. We have to start thinking in the direction of defect prevention rather than just thinking about defect detection. Testers take a lot of pride in detecting defects. You know, they proudly say, say that, oh, you know what? I found 100 defects in the previous release. 
even in a lot of organizations, defect metrics are chosen as a criteria for doing appraisals, which is a shame in my opinion, which should not be the criteria at all. But then the point is, how are you moving yourselves towards sustainability if you are constantly focusing on detecting defects rather than preventing those defects, right? Start thinking about it. Start thinking of working, collaborating with your developers, collaborating with your architects, trying to understand your applications better, you know? Uh, develop your own skills, learn to code so that you are able to speak to the developers in their language. You know, you understand the nature of the problem and are able to provide solutions. Stop thinking about finding defects, start thinking about preventing them. Now, what are the testing practices that can enable sustainability? Number one is adopting agile and iterative development methodologies that allow you continuous and early feedback. Now, Agile and DevOps are two easy ways of getting there, but you need to learn how it happens. In a lot of organizations, still, uh, you know, when they say that they are doing Agile, but they are actually doing many waterfalls, that is, they wait for testing to come down to the very end, and that's where they start thinking about it. No, you need to start thinking early. Prioritizing your automation and continuous integration to, to reduce manual testing efforts. That's a term that I don't like to use, but just to put things in perspective, you know, you have to reduce that, focus a little more on making yourself efficient because automation gives you increased efficiency. Using performance testing to evaluate scalability and energy consumption of software applications. Now, when we do performance testing, are we thinking about it from an energy consumption perspective? If not, then start thinking now. It will make a big difference and you will contribute in a very big way towards the sustainability initiative. Leveraging security testing to eliminate vulnerabilities that, that leave you exposed because when uh, applications are not secure, trust me, they are not sustainable as well. Utilizing regression testing to ensure that the changes don't leave any holes behind. You know, you have to make sure that, that you take care of all these practices. So this is, these are some of the ways where, you know, testers can contribute. And like I said, you know, the, the question that I had asked in as the title was, can testers escape the sustainability wave? The answer is no. And again, going back to the poll that I did, you know, some of you said that you are you do not have a saving instrument, you do not have any investment. Some of you said that you're saving or investing for the present. Start thinking about the future. Start thinking about the next generation because they are here. As we speak, they are here. You know, many of us are parents. We are looking at our next generation. Are we doing enough for them? Are we doing enough for the planet? Are we doing enough for everybody else? It's about paying it forward. It's about, you know, giving back to the people the way we receive things, right? So I, I'm sure that you will start thinking about all this. I'm sure that you will start focusing on your testing from this perspective as well. And if that is not enough, let me tell you that even though this term sustainability may or may not feature in the ISTPB glossary of terms, sustainability is a big part of of the TMAP uh, guidelines or the TMAP way of learning, which you know uh, Rick spoke about TMAP earlier this morning. It is a part of TMAP. It is a part of one of the quality characteristics that people are starting to talk about. Companies are talking about it. Customers are talking about it. So if you are still not thinking about it, it's high time that you also start thinking about it. Here are some of the references. Like I said, I will be sharing the slides right after my talk. So you can look them up. And on that note, I would like to thank you all and I'm ready for any questions. Thank you, Prajesh. Yeah. Prajesh, it's a topic which you uh, like which you brought in and try to relate with software testing, uh, to be uh, precise, to the software engineering. Nice. So, uh, I see one question uh, coming in 
coming from Amit Patel. So we'll take this one question. So he asks, what are the uh, metrics or parameters that we are looking to evaluate uh, scalability and energy consumption? Well, okay. So uh, the scalability and energy consumption parameters are uh, applicable to right now at this point in time, applicable to industries which are working on those areas. And what they are looking for is the energy efficiency. So for example, you know, how much time does a particular program take to execute? For example, you're talking about response times and things like that. Now in that time, how much energy is the equipment that is used for running that piece of code or running that application consuming? Okay, so there are two aspects to it. One is your hardware, which is consuming a lot of of, of energy and secondly is your software part itself you know if your applications are efficient then you will see a direct relationship with the energy that the hardware is consuming because your software uh, needs a supporting hardware to run uh, you know people talk about uh, devices when people are talking about blockchain and stuff like that people are talking about devices with very high GPU and things like that. But are we thinking about how much energy is being consumed by that equipment? Okay, if you leave a laptop running, how much energy are you consuming at the end of the day? Are you thinking about it from that perspective? Uh, you know, during my interview with, with Adi on this subject, I gave an example. You know, people came up with dark mode. Did people realize or ask questions, why do we have dark mode? You know, on, on, you know, nowadays all applications, whether it is LinkedIn, Twitter, everybody supports dark mode. Why? Because dark mode is much more energy efficient. And there has been a considerable amount of research that has been done. So there are metrics. There are metrics which, is, which are talking about scalability, which are saying that, okay, applications will scale up down the line with more and more people adopting. But is that making the solution more energy efficient? If not, then you need to start thinking, start tracking in terms of how much power is it consuming, how much voltage, how much current is being consumed, and how can you reduce it? Are this running on uh, you know, renewable sources of energy or not? Are some of the questions that you should be asking? I hope yeah. I've answered the question. Yes, Amit, uh, yeah, uh, please catch up. With so moving to the cloud, yes, yes, Amit. Yeah. Yes, no. Amit, I, 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 I can I'm see sorry. your comment in the chat. Moving to the cloud is definitely one of the solutions that you have. Is you know there is a big reason why there is a push towards a movement from on-prem to cloud services, and uh, you know sustainability initiatives is definitely one of the answers to that. Yeah, Rajesh, we'll take uh, this kind of discussion and uh, more questions on chat with you, and I request all audience okay to, uh, to connect with Rajesh uh, for more questions. And Rajesh, I do have questions for you. <laughs> I mean, <don't> <laughs> chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Palak. Yeah. Back to you. So thank you, Mr. Brijesh, for yeah. such an amazing session. Uh, the feedback.